Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie Haney here for 3 News. I have your latest update related to the COVID-19 coronavirus here in the state of Ohio. The Ohio Department of Health has just released its updated numbers on the number of positive cases here in the state of Ohio. Now, I want to make you aware of a change in the way the numbers are being reported. These are not only confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 coronavirus anymore. The CDC has expanded the definition, and now we are also looking at probable cases. As we know, testing has been a significant issue in states around the country. So when we look at the numbers of COVID-19 coronavirus now in the state of Ohio, we are looking at the expanded CDC definition, which includes probable cases, in addition to cases that have 100% been confirmed COVID-19 coronavirus as a result of some form of testing here in the state of Ohio. We now have those new numbers. We now have a total of 12,919 accounted for cases of COVID-19 coronavirus here in the state of Ohio. And the number of deaths is now 509, a total of 509 deaths. This is again a significant jump from the numbers that were reported on Sunday. Sunday's numbers were 11,602 cases of COVID-19 coronavirus and 471 deaths. So that's an increase of 1,317 cases that are now being accounted for here in the state of Ohio and 38 deaths from Sunday at 2 p.m. until today, Monday, April 20th at 2 p.m. Now, if you're looking at the number of deaths, that's nearly double the number of deaths from Saturday to Sunday. On Saturday to Sunday, that difference there, there were 1,380 new cases and 20 new deaths reported on Sunday afternoon from the period of Saturday to Sunday. So what we're looking at right now is nearly a doubling of deaths related to COVID-19 coronavirus here in the state of Ohio. We now have a total of 2,653 people hospitalized related to COVID-19 coronavirus and 798 of those people are in the intensive care unit. We're now seeing a shift as well in the percentage of males to females who we are accounting in those positive cases. 59% of those cases of COVID-19 coronavirus are reported in males and 41% in females. Now, we're getting this information as new reports suggest that many Americans may have had COVID-19 with no symptoms. This is not necessarily brand new information because we have heard from health officials that many people could have COVID-19 and be completely asymptomatic, therefore passing it on without anyone knowing, and also may have developed those antibodies to COVID-19 coronavirus. There's new research that suggests more people than previously thought may have already been exposed to and been a host to coronavirus with little to no symptoms at all. So this does seem like good news, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because it brings questions out about how business can resume here in the state of Ohio. The head of the CDC recently said that as many as one quarter, one fourth, 25% of people who have had COVID-19 coronavirus may have shown no symptoms at all. So keep in mind when you're thinking about that, those temperature checks, the dry cough, a slight fever, you know, these are things that would not necessarily show that someone would have COVID-19 coronavirus. And these are the kind of things that we're thinking about when we're trying to take into consideration what it would look like for the economy to reopen in the state of Ohio. Worldwide, we know that there have been more than 2.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 coronavirus and more than 160,000 deaths related to the virus. Here in the U.S., we know that there have been over 760,000 cases of COVID-19 coronavirus and almost 41,000 deaths. Keep in mind, the data that we are working with because of all these factors is incomplete, and these are the known cases and the known deaths. Now, when we talk about testing and the need to do this expansive testing as we look to potentially reopening parts of the economy here in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine has said that we can expect something to be happening beginning on May 1st. Rite Aid is offering more self-swab COVID-19 testing sites. 
Two of them opened in Ohio. We talked about that this morning, but the chain is also opening two more sites in Ohio on Wednesday. Those will be in Akron and in Youngstown. So the Rite Aid in Akron will be located at 4053 South Main Street, and the Rite Aid in Youngstown is at 713 North State Street in Girard. So these are the self-swab tests. They're, they're administered in the store's parking lot and overseen by Rite Aid pharmacists. And you are required to pre-register and schedule an appointment in order to get one of those tests. There will also be nine other testing sites opened across the country by Rite Aid on Wednesday. That includes Delaware, Idaho, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. And Rite Aid now has a total of 24 self-swab testing locations across the U.S. in eight different states. So we are fortunate. We do have two of them here in Ohio already. We have that in, in uh, Parma at 5795 State Road. So that opened this morning at 9 a.m. That'll be open till 5 p.m. If you would like a test and you think you might need one, you can register for that, pre-register for that and schedule an appointment ahead of time at the Rite Aid website. We have links to that on WKYC.com. And there is also a location in Toledo. Now that location in Toledo is at 7225 Airport Highway in Holland. Those are the current locations in Ohio with those other two opening in Akron and Youngstown on Wednesday. So keep that in mind. Now, as many people are looking at the economic ramifications of how the COVID-19 coronavirus shutdowns are impacting them, there is a new bill being proposed that would cancel rent and mortgage payments during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a national bill, so this is at the federal level. The Rent and Mortgage Ca Cancellation Act would also create a fund for landlords and mortgage holders to cover their losses from these canceled payments. So it is sort of an all-encompassing look, trying to protect the homeowner, trying to protect the renter, trying to protect the landlord and the mortgage holder. It was introduced by Minnesota Democrat Ilan Omar on Friday and would be retroactive back to March 13th and it would be effective for one full year if passed. Now remember, this is just a bill at this time, so a lot of things have to happen for this to potentially go into effect. But Representative Omar said in a statement, the coronavirus is more than just a public health crisis, it's an economic crisis. We must take major action to protect the health and economic security of the most vulnerable, including the millions of Americans currently at risk of housing instability and homelessness. That was a direct quote from Representative Omar, who has brought this bill to the floor. Uh, Omar also said Congress has a responsibility to step in to stabilize both local communities and the housing market during this time of uncertainty and crisis. In 2008, we bailed out Wall Street. This time, it's time to bail out the American people who are suffering. That's a quote from Representative Omar from Minnesota. There was another bill recently presented from our representative, Democrat Tim Ryan, and that aims to give Americans a $2,000 monthly payment saying that that $1,200 stimulus check, up to $1,200 stimulus check, varying amounts depending on your income level, was just not enough. So that's another bill that's been proposed. And that bill would also incorporate college students who were left out of the stimulus checks in the U.S. CARES Act because they are a dependent, but they're not a dependent child. So we'll be watching those bills to see what happens. At this time, about 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment in the last month, and the federal government has said the U.S. CARES Act does allow for a $600 additional payment for Americans who have been able to get unemployment benefits through their states. People can expect to start seeing those checks if you are already receiving unemployment benefits, but do keep in mind the difference between this additional $600 weekly payment for people receiving unemployment benefits and the stimulus check is that the additional $600 payment is taxable. So do keep that in mind when you're drafting your budgets and figuring out how to move forward in this uncertain time. Now, when we look at other impacts to the economy related to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, oil has now dropped below $2 a, ba a barrel. Bloomberg Business has just reported that barrels of Texas oil have now dropped below $2. Many outlets are reporting that the actual value is inching closer to $1 per barrel. So to put this in perspective, the market opened, the market opened this morning at $28.05 and, 
and over the last 12 months has averaged at 50 to 55 dollars a barrel barrel so that is a significant drop to say the least oil prices have drastically decreased over the past few months beginning with a steep decline in february gas prices at record lows in some places under a dollar for a gallon which is something that many of us haven't seen i haven't seen gas below a dollar a gallon since before i started driving before i got my driver's license and that was quite a while ago all right those are your headlines for the afternoon of monday april 20th 2020 governor mike dewine is having his daily press conference you can find that on three news also on our facebook and youtube pages we'll be back with more for you on the air at 5 p.m in what's new I will see you there. We will also have more on what matters most at 6 p.m., front row at 7 p.m., and what's next at 11 p.m. I'm Stephanie Haney, and I will see you back here tomorrow on Tuesday at 11 a.m.